Hi everyone and welcome to the last official online lecture for Marketing 1027. We've got a little bit of ground to cover today but I'm going to keep it fairly short given you've got a lot of work to do coming up including studying for the final exam as well as finalizing those group projects and group project presentations. So today I'm going to talk about the implementation plan give you some final project tips, talk a little bit about the presentation, and get into some tips on business presentation skills. As well, I'll do a brief exam review. I did want to point out that discussion board number four that was due uh, today, or April 9th, depending on when you're listening to this, was cancelled. I did mention that last week. I will have your, your discussion board assignments marked and handed back to you for the exam next week. Then we've got the final exam which is uh, April 16th so that will be held on the Monday in class at 8 a.m. and the projects are due the same week April 20th by midnight and then the last thing we've got is the online collaborate se sessions presenting your projects or there's also an opportunity for those that don't want to do it on Collaborate to book something with me in person. And we're going to discuss that on April 16th before we write the exam. So the other thing that I wanted to point out is I did send out an email on Saturday night to let you guys know that this lecture was going to be up a little earlier than usual to give you the opportunity to listen to it before the class time on Monday if you wanted to uh, join me in my Collaborate office hours 9 to 11 on Monday to ask me any questions about the exam or the project or anything else that has to do with the content for the semester. Uh, as well, I will have, um, so obviously April 2nd, no longer. As well, I've added office an office hour on Tuesday the 10th from 3 to 4 in case people don't get an opportunity to listen to it before Monday between 9 and 11. And I'll be at my computer with that Collaborate tab open for anybody that wants to pop in and chat. And then, as always, feel free to set up any other time with me to chat about any questions or comments that you have. Uh, send me an email and we'll set up some time to, uh, to discuss anything that you have to discuss. So let's continue on and wrap up the content for the course. So we've worked through steps one, two, three, and four, the implementation of the marketing mix. And now we're going to get into a little bit more specifics on implementation planning and evaluating performance and using marketing metrics to finalize the content in the course. So implementation planning by definition is the operational stage during which an organization attempts to put the marketing plan into practice. So you've spent all this time figuring out what you're going to do and now you actually need to do it. And so there's three sort of general activities around this. The first one is organizing the marketing effort. Then we've got staffing the organization. And then lastly, directing the execution of marketing plan. So there are several phases of implementation. You want to finalize the strategic plan with input from all invested parties. Then make sure that you're aligned to budget goals. There might be um, various versions of the plan that different groups need to um, implement. If, for instance, sales, marketing, finance, HR. And then the last one I've got here is establish a system for tracking and monitoring the plan. So you want to think about things like, you know, the appropriate trained people being ready to use their unique skills and abilities to implement various elements of the plan. Do you have sufficient time and money allocated to the project? Are, are there technology and management systems in place necessary to track the program? So those types of decisions and thought needs to go into um, the final plans before you move into, into implementation. Now, one of the things that we did not talk about at all in detail this semester is budgeting. And it's an important thing to mention. Um, I mean, really a major tool for evaluating any business program, including marketing, is the budgeting process. You know, how much is this stuff going to cost? And the budget really quantifies the marketing plan. Now, there's different approaches to budgeting. One is a fixed approach. I've got $10 million for marketing this year. That's my budget. What am I going to do with it? Another common approach is something called advertising to sales ratio. 
So looking at your um, your sales numbers from previous years historically and saying how much advertising dollars went into hitting those numbers. And if our targets for sales increase, then we're going to need to increase our advertising dollars proportionally to make sure that we can hit those numbers. Um, you might have a task-based method where you know the different um, tactics that you want to employ and you have to decide how much each of these things are going to cost and then you add them up. You might have a historical spending method. So, you know, we spent this much last year, we plan to grow the business by this much this year. So what does our marketing budget need to be? So lots of different ways to come up with these numbers. And once you do determine what the, ta what the tactics are going to be, the execution of the plan and how much money, then you have to figure out how you're going to measure your program, how you are really going to evaluate what you've done. And there's lots of different ways you can think about and look at evaluation, lots of different options. Um, processes and approaches could include sales volume analysis. So how much are we actually selling? Uh, are we hitting our results versus our sales goals? What's our market share? Um, have we come in our costs for our marketing costs, what, what we said we were going to spend and what we actually spent? Um, you could look at contribution margin. These measures address some of the more general approaches to evaluating your marketing plan effectiveness. But you also want to go a little bit deeper to assess the effectiveness of your specific advertising campaigns. Some of these are the same, monitoring sales. But you might also want to look at things like new customers or store website traffic, click-through rates, or social media, social media engagement. Looking at things like comparing sales before, during, and after an ad campaign, and keeping in mind that advertising often has a cumulative or delayed effect. So ad-driven sales might not materialize immediately, but it's something that you still would want to track. Think about a print ad campaign. If you included a coupon that a customer could redeem for a discount, you could code the coupon to determine which ad or publication generates the best results. Looking at pre and post advertising traffic to your website. So all those measurements need to be thought about. And as I've mentioned many times, you need to have a way to measure what it is you're doing to answer those questions that I alluded to up front. This is a study done by a company called Research Now. They're an online research, marketing research company. And they asked marketers to think about their advertising campaigns and what are the most important objectives for advertising. So you see at the top there, increased sales. But then measurements like new customer acquisition or brand awareness, customer retention, driving traffic to websites, engagement, those things are also very, very important. And when asked how they measure the above, respondents really said the proof of increased sales was the top indicator, traffic second, and then you look at things like social media engagement. So for your projects, I'm going to give you a bit more of a specific idea as of what I'll be looking for in the implementation section for those marks. But thinking about measurements like this will be important for that section. Let's take a look at part two of the project and marketing plan that is going to be due on April 20th. As we have discussed, it's about developing a one-year marketing communication plan to bring your new product idea forward for the next fiscal. And the timing for that is going to be September 2018. And as we have discussed, it's about bringing the product or launching the product in the Canadian market or a region within Canada, that's fine as well. What you're going to be handing in, submitting to me, will be a PowerPoint written report. So professional formatting is still important, title page, table of contents, executive summary of the plan, and then you're really going to introduce the product and the marketing communication plan for year one. As I discussed a few times, projects are due April 20th by midnight via email to me, no hard copy is needed. So I wanted to just discuss section by section what I would be expecting. And I've also given you an indication of approximately how many slides you might need to cover this content. So first up, pretty self-explanatory, we have the executive summary. 
and this really just top line discusses what you're launching, some key marketing objectives behind your product launch. So I've got a minimum of three objectives, ensure they're smart, and I would like at least one tied to a financial objective or performance objective. So they can't all be about increasing brand awareness or um, your social media following. One I want tied to sales or market share, revenue, that sort of thing. And these marketing objectives should partially be based on your determination of what the market size is that you had to calculate in part one of the project. Then we've got the target market analysis. So you have done some segmentation and target market analysis in part one. And in this section, it's really your job to go from this target market to the target audience. So drilling down a little bit further and identifying specifically who you think your product is directed to and who you are going to advertise to. So we've had lots of broad-based discussions about this. So a target market, broad-based um, definition of who's interested in your brand. But a target audience is who is the communications you're developing, attempting to influence. So you can get a little bit more specific here in this section. And it really would be about looking at that segmentation chart that you have developed and then selecting the segment that you're going to move forward with for your product launch. Now, along with that, developing a consumer profile that describes your product's ideal consumer would be helpful, sort of like a persona type of exercise. Then we move into the product and pricing strategy. So the first thing I'm looking for is your positioning strategy. And we discussed five different positioning strategies in class. So go back to that lecture. I think it's possibly in week two. And look at the different positioning strategies we have discussed and select one that makes sense. Then I would expect to see a positioning statement using the model that we covered in class with that has the core user frame of reference, point of difference, reason to believe. The next component is the brand name and the rationale behind choosing that brand name. So why you feel that that's a good brand name and um, just some thoughts and perspectives around that. If packaging is relevant to your product, then I would expect to see that here. Uh, there's a couple of technology um, companies or products. So if you're developing an app, I would let, I would expect to see a mock-up of the, of the app and sort of the screenshots of the app. Now we're going to move into your price point. So that's looking at like deciding what your price point is and giving me a bit of background as to how you chose the price, potentially why, um, you know, comparing, comparing it to competitive products, rationale, behind your pricing recommendation. So again, in this section, you're really going to get into the product in a little bit more detail, some branding decisions, packaging, and some pricing. Now we move on to the next section, which is the creative brief. So what I expect here is that you complete a one-page creative brief using the format we've discussed in class in which your IMC campaign and creative will be based on. So we have discussed this in detail. You've had opportunities to practice this exercise. Most of you did very well, and I will be evaluating your creative brief. Now, falling out of the creative brief is your IMC uh, and promotion strategy plan. And in this section, what I would expect is you select several of the media that we have discussed over the course of the semester and some backup rationale why this tactic makes sense for your product launch. And then you're going to get into the creative strategy and the messaging behind this tactic. So what I would expect to see here is some mock-ups of some creative, a campaign theme, and an integrated marketing communication feel that's tying this whole campaign together. Um, and as I mentioned, mock-up of the creative. I think, you know, at minimum, you want to pick four of the tactics that we've discussed. We've discussed, depending on how you slice and dice the information, you know, 10 to 20. What I mean by that is, you know, within out of home, you've got transit and you've got point of sale and you've got uh, billboards. So you could dissect, dissect that down even further. 
um, etc. But really, really think about what are all of the IMC tactics that would make sense for this brand and put together a little mini campaign for its launch. And those two sections are, are the biggest sections of the, of the project. Then we've got implementation and evaluation. So this is a one page, 12 month implementation chart of promotional activities. So the next couple of slides, I've given you some examples of previous um, projects from, from previous semesters. This is the type of thing that I'm looking for. So down the side, you've got all your promotions or um, communication strategies. And then you've got how you're going to evaluate their effectiveness and then the timing that they will be executed. So here's another example here for a different project. And again, you've got what, what the tactic's going to be. Then there's some details around the tactic, um, evaluation information, and again, timing. Uh, and I've included a third one as well. So this is the type of detail and information I'm looking for in that implementation section. What we had discussed is there is no budget attached to this project, but what I would expect is that you are making uh, IMC tactical decisions logically and proposing things that the company most likely would be able to execute and afford to execute. So that's the hand in that I will be looking for. Now the next component is the marketing communication plan presentation. Each group's going to have 15 minutes to pitch their ideas and communication plan to me with the objective of getting me to buy into your new product proposal. The presentation should be in PowerPoint format and really it would be just a modified or scaled down version of what you have handed in to me that you know the important things you want to discuss with me within 15 minutes that would convince me that this is a good idea for the company to pursue. So fairly straightforward here. I wanted to take just a couple of more minutes to discuss the evaluation for the marketing plan presentation in a little bit more detail. So this is what you're going to be evaluated on. Essentially the flow of the presentation, the introduction, body conclusion. There will be some marks dedicated to the um, speakers. So you'll be marked as a team on how you deal with this. So style, engagement, um, you know, audibility, those types of things. Then there's marks for the presentation itself. So the PowerPoint slides, attractive, easy to read, error free, uh, you know, a good show and tell, mock up and creative, very, very important here. I'm throwing a little bit of marks at you, just you're on time and ready to go. Then you've got some marks about selling your ideas. So this is really a pitch, um, a, a pitch element that I'm going to be evaluating you on. Have you done a good job sort of clarifying things, a good summary of the key selling points? There'll be some marks for flow. Your topics are moving logically from one speaker to the next. There's some transition. Also marks for integration. So integrating your strategy and your marketing strategy with your creative tactics that you are recommending. So does that all tie together and make sense? Some questions I'm going to throw at you. And then a last mark about sort of creativity and engaging and, and uh, memorability of your presentation. That's the, those are the things you need to think about when you're putting together that 15 minutes in front of me in a few weeks from now. I did want to spend just a little bit of time talking about effective presentation skills. I don't think you get very much of this in your, in your program at this point. And in fact, it's something we've identified as a bit of a miss. And I know the new students coming in in September, there'll be a communication course for them to really hone in on these skills. So I'm just going to give you a very quick um, interpretation of things that you need to be thinking about when you're putting together any type of business presentation. So the first one I've got here is how do you make yourself feel confident about doing a presentation? And it really boils down to three key things. Preparation, being able to really relax, and practice. So what I mean by preparation is making sure that you've put everything that you can into this. The most Effective presenters are ones that know their material very, very well and therefore can present it well. And I know if there's a topic that I'm a little bit 
nervous about presenting, the number one thing that I can do to make those nerves go away and feel more confident is really preparing. So, I mean, I think same in this case and in any business presentation. The next one I've got down here is relax. And I use breathing techniques works for me, but whatever helps you to get into the right frame of mind to be able to present and not be nervous. So as I said, deep breath, giving yourself time. Um, you know, and the third thing I've got here is practicing. I really do find, and this is, you know, research shows that they, um, the nerves really do go away if you have practiced what it is you're going to say. So moving to the next component, I want to talk to you about developing the message. So I've got a few things here, the audience, the opening message transition, and wrapping up. So when I say the audience, I mean really understanding them and what is in it for them. So in this case, I'm, you know, I'm your boss in the same company or management that you're trying to sell this idea to. If you work for an advertising agency, you might be pitching your idea to a client. So in this case, I've carried through the client as the um, as the audience member, but really it's about being very specific on what it means for them, what's in it for them, and why they should be engaged in what it is that you're saying. And in this case, it's really how is it going to meet the objectives that you've laid out, both financial and communication objectives, in terms of what you're proposing. Now, the second thing that I've got up here is the opening and the power and the importance of a strong opening. And I got to tell you, I can decide in about 10 to 20 seconds if I'm going to be engaged in a presentation. And this is very, very common. I, I know in my PNG days, I did a ton of interviewing and I could tell almost instantaneously if the interview was going to go well or not. So you have a very quick amount of time to make a good impression and doing this in a presentation is really opening the presentation strong. What I don't want is here's the agenda, let's jump in. A good opening really captures the audience and brings them into the story that you're about to tell. So it might be an anecdote that you want to share. It might be a statistic or a fact. Uh, it might be a quote. But something that makes you stand out and engages the audience is an important thing to do. I'm just for fun, I've thrown in a little clip from one of my, sh my favorite shows, Mad Men. And this is a very specific example of an opening for an advertising pitch to a client. And the backdrop of this, um, the background for this clip is he is pitching to Kodak, so the company Kodak, and he has the job of selling, Kodak has come up with a new product idea, so this is back in the 50s, late 50s, and it's the slide projector. So I'm sure meant most of you know what I'm talking about, that slide projector where you put the little square photographs in the um, in the carousel and you uh, project it up onto a screen or onto a wall. And so Kodak in this case has come up with this this new technology for the slide projector and this advertising agency has to figure out a way to sell it. So take a look at this Mad Men clip and how well he does in terms of um, opening the pitch. This was a bit of an exaggerated example to make my point. But what I want you to take away from this is really thinking about how you are going to begin a presentation in a way that is engaging and draws the audience in to the story that you're about to tell. Now, the next point that I want to make here is about message transition. So how are you going to transition between points? Letting the audience know you're moving on to something new. And here's just some thought starters to get you guys engaged in this point. But, um, you know, my next key point is this. Now that I've finished talking about this, let's move on to this. But an audience really likes to know the roadmap of where it is that they're going. Then the last thing I've got up here is wrapping up. One of the things that drives me nuts about business presentations is when students finish up and don't summarize the situation, try to ask for the sale, tell the client how what they've presented is going to meet the objectives or solve the problem that they put forward, 
or have a call to action. You do want to make sure, just like you've got to open strong, that you close strong with a good summary of the situation and, again, how what you've presented is going to solve the problem that has been laid out. So let's move on to discuss the final exam. We're 35%. It's on Monday. You've got two hours to complete the test. We're going to start right at 8 o'clock in the morning. And the sections go like this. We've got multiple choice. We've got short answer, which is a bit of a mini case study and some other short answers. And then there is some marketing math problems. So the multiple choice really cover everything that we have discussed this semester. If I have not addressed it, in my lectures, it will not be on the exam, rest assured. So your best bet is to go through the PowerPoint slides, make sure you've engaged in the online lectures, and my multiple choice questions are very applied. I am not asking for definitions or how many steps or theories. Really, it's very situational based and asking you to comment based on the situation that I have laid out. The short answers are even more applied, so you will be in um, in this section, there will be a mini case, and you will be answering questions based on that case. And then the last thing we've got here is marketing math. So let's talk about the topics in a little bit more detail. So the, the topics include, and for the most part, everything on the exam is within these within these buckets. So we spent time on marketing strategic planning. So the whole flow of how a marketing strategic plan works. We wrote marketing and communication objectives. We worked on SWOT analysis. So understanding strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, how a SWOT is used. Making sure you understand the process of environmental scanning. So look at what's going on outside of the company to help drive decisions or identify opportunities or threats. We did some exercises on the market product portfolio analysis. So pull up that slide. And this is the information where if you were to grow your, needed to grow your business and you were looking at it from a product perspective, how would you do it? And we talked about um, market penetration or new product development or diversification. So that, that's that slide there where there was four quadrants. We discussed segmentation, targeting, and positioning. So the four different segmentation methods, um, demographic, psychographic, geographic, and behavioral. And then taking those segmentations and developing a target or a target audience. We looked at five different positioning strategies. So make sure that you review those and familiarize yourself again with those. Then we spent time on IMC tactics. So the last three weeks we went through, well, sort of two weeks in detail and a tiny little bit today, not much. Um, we went through a whole bunch of different IMC tactics. We talked about their advantages and disadvantages. We talked about when you might use these certain tactics. We discussed trends that were happening within marketing with these different tactics. We looked at development principles behind these tactics. So when I talk about tactics, I'm talking about you know, advertising like print and television and video and out of home. I'm talking about our discussion on direct marketing, I'm talking about our discussion on sales promotion and PR, the digital tactics we talked about, out of home. So all of those are fair game in terms of when you would use them, main pros and cons, trends and development principles. Now in my online lecture, I think last week or the week before, I discussed common media trends that are happening right now. So when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the information about which tactics are growing and which tactics are decreasing in terms of their spending. I'm talking about how people are now spending different types of time engaging in media. And so there was some discussion around that. Also, there will be a question on pricing strategies, the three main ones, so value, cost, and competitive. And within the little case study, I'm going to be asking you, based on this product and what you know about this product, which of these three pricing strategies would you choose when you're coming up with a price point for the product and then defend your answer. 
as well I wanted to mention within the case study portion of the exam. So this is the short answers that are worth um, 35 marks. I'm going to, when I say you need to know segmentation, I'm going to ask you to define who the target audience is. And I'm going to be looking to see that you've leveraged all of those segmentation variables. As well within that case, I'm going to ask you to select several tactics that we have discussed this semester. Which ones would you recommend for this um, for this new product and defend your defend your choices and then also explain some you know ideas on designing design principles and um, sort of creative behind these tactics. In terms of the math, you're going to need to um, review the concept of break-even analysis. You'll be calculating a break-even analysis. There will be a question on indexing. There will be a question on CPM. There will be a calculation where you'll have to calculate reach, frequency, and GRPs. So those are the ones that I want you to focus on. A few others to mention, um, types and levels of product. So we that la the last live lecture that I had with you guys, we discussed this, so review those notes. We also discussed some branding strategies and brand development strategies. So this is that slide on um, are you going to do a line extension? Are you going to do a multi-brand? There was four different brand development strategies, so make sure you review those. And then also elements of the creative brief, because you're going to need to um, create some of these elements depending on the mini case. So I'm going to have you write a communication objective. I'd already uh, indicated that you're going to need to come up with who the target audience is. You will be writing a concept statement. So What's the consumer insight, benefit, reason to believe? If you had to select a peel and a creative execution tactic for this product and the creative, what would those look like? So those are all topics that I would really focus your efforts on. I, I know it's a lot, but what I can tell you is if you've engaged in the content and you have gone through the lecture notes and listened to the, to the lecture um, to the lecture, online lecture videos, you should do just fine. There are no tricks. It's all what we focused our time on, and I think it's a very good representation of the content that we've covered in the course. And it's also a lot of application. So if you're um, really understanding what we've talked about, you should be able to take that understanding and it will play out in the exam. I've taught this course many, many years, and for the most part, students do very well in this final exam. So that's, that's it for the content for today. Again, if there's any questions, um, the, the Collaborate on Monday morning, if, you, if you're listening to this on Sunday, uh, between 9 and 11, also that extra Collaborate hour on Tuesday between 3 and 4, or any other time, just send me an email and I can set up some time to answer your questions. So good luck, everybody. I'm looking really forward to seeing you next week in class. And I know you got lots of work going on, but um, buckle down. And I think, as I said, this will be a good exam for most of you. Thank you.